Glory be to God. It's another time to share God's word with you. And in times like this, it's important to hear the voice of God. And I believe there are so many things happening that it's very difficult to miss out on what God is saying. And God has given me a word in season. God's answer to discouragement. Whoa. God's answer to discouragement. You may be asking yourself, Bishop, is it really necessary to preach on a team like this? Yes, of course. We live in very dangerous times. Mind you, the pillar of crowd by day and the pillar of fire by night was not put in place by God in Egypt. It was in the wilderness, which means there is time for everything. There was no need for the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night in Egypt. But it became absolutely necessary in the wilderness on the way to the promised land. So I believe in this time and season, a word on discouragement is essential. In actual fact, discouragement is one of the seven D's. What I call the seven deadly D's. Bishop, what are they? Discouragement, defeat, disappointment, delay, doubt, distraction, and depression. They are all in full swing now. All over the world. I go over again. Discouragement, defeat, disappointment, delay, doubt, distraction, and depression. And we are going to tackle it head on. God's answer to discouragement. I am hearing a lot in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of coronavirus, in the midst of the lockdown. People don't know what to do. Just the other day, I saw on one of the television stations that people are spending time. There is an increase in people watching pornographic movies. They want something to fill time. There are people who have committed suicide in many parts of the world. People don't know what to do with themselves. Discouragement is in full swing. But you can escape it in the name of Jesus. And God has given me a clear word that will do you a world of good. I charge you to pay attention. It may make a difference between now and where you are going to a new future. Let us pray. Father, I surrender myself absolutely to the power of your will. Sharpen my lips. Use me as an instrument of blessing. Let me speak by your mandate and authority. And let as many as hear me declare boldly that this indeed are the words of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's look at two scriptures. First, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. That's quite a lengthy scripture, but it's essential. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. We are in 1 Kings 19. And how he had executed all the prophets by the sword. And Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Mind you, this was after the encounter on Mount Carmel. Verse 3 of 1 Kings 19. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. This is Elijah. And went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there, Magdad. He left his aid, his servant behind. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a broom tree. He's going to get nasty. And he prayed and he said that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life. This is Elijah the prophet. Am I am no better than... He said, I am no better than my fathers. Then he lay down and slept. Hmm. under a broom tree. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and there was, as he said, was a, ba a cake baked on coal and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. 
Let's go to my second scripture. John chapter 21, verse 3. And Simon Peter said to them, I go a fishing. Therefore said to him, we go with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat and that night they caught nothing. I'm speaking to you ladies and gentlemen on God's answer to discouragement. You see, discouragement is the imprisonment of the spirit in activity of the soul and the paralysis of the body. That is a big one. What is discouragement? In a very basic definition, it's an imprisonment of the spirit, inactivity of the soul, and a paralysis of the body. A U.S. magazine reported recently that depression, disappointment, and despair are the basic facts that lead to discouragement. Yes, life are full of challenges. Life is full of rejection. Life is full of trouble. Discouragement is real and it's in the Bible. It can destroy your life. But how do I get out of discouragement? 30,000, according to the record, 30,000 Americans kill themselves yearly out of discouragement. 100,000 attempt suicide yearly. Millions kill themselves slowly through alcohol, drug abuse, overeating, and workaholism. Mind you, discouragement is not a sin. Hear me well. But how you face it, how you handle it, and how you deal with discouragement can affect your spiritual life, your growth, your relationship, your fellowship, and your joy in Christ. In times like this, you must hear this word. I say, discouragement is not a sin. It can prevent you from seeing, thinking, and feeling clearly in your mind what God wants you to do. Discouragement is disruptive to your life. There are three things I want you to note first of all before we get into an exposition of God's word. Three things make discouragement potent. A potent problem you must watch out against. The first characteristic, beloved, about discouragement is that discouragement is universal. It strikes everyone. Old, young, the poor, the rich, the educated, the illiterate, the black, the white, the Christian, the unbeliever. Everybody faces discouragement. How do I deal with it? The second characteristic about discouragement is that it is reoccurring. Once and again, no immunity, no antibody to immunize you against discouragement. Discouragement can come back again if you don't know how to deal with it. Third, so first, discouragement is universal. Don't worry, you are not alone. Secondly, discouragement is recurring. It will come back again. Watch out. Thirdly, the third characteristic, discouragement is highly contagious. A casual contact with someone who has discouragement and you can be afflicted. A discouraged person can afflict you with it like any virus. In actual fact, there's such a word as floating bitterness. Bishop, what is that? Floating bitterness is when people try to offload their bitterness to you so it can move on. You become a transit point so that you can become the purveyor and carrier of the bitterness. It's called floating bitterness. There is such a thing as floating discouragement. Today, in the midst of all the lockdown, in the midst of all the negative news, in the midst of all the fake news, in the midst of all the media reports, the depression, discouragement is in the air. But what do I do? 
I read a book on the formula for spiritual success, and he stated, if you want to be distressed, look within. If you want to be defeated, look back. If you want to be distracted, look around. If you want to be dismayed, look at others. If you want to be delivered, look up. Wow. Let's take it again. I hope you are noting it. He said, if you want to be distressed, look within. If you want to be defeated, look back. If you want to be distracted, look around. If you want to be dismayed, look at others. But if you want to be delivered, look up. Let me share a story with you for a moment. A man standing on a bridge prepared to jump to his death. He was on a suicide mission. A passerby came along and stopped this car, attempted to talk some sense into the man who wanted to commit suicide by jumping into the river. He asked the man why he wanted to jump to his death. He replied that he has too many things that are wrong with his life in the world. The passerby tried to convince him and dissuade him from killing himself for 10 to 15 minutes. The conversation went on. And finally, they both jumped into the river. Discouragement is contagious. In times like this, be careful what you hear. Be careful what you listen to. Be careful what you watch. Because it would affect your heart. That's what the Bible says. Pay heed to the word of God. Three things I've said. Discouragement is universal. You are not alone. That's why God sent me this word to you. Discouragement is recurring. Discouragement is highly contagious. You have an opportunity about how to handle it. I want to give you keys and the ability to handle discouragement in times like this. Let us see some biblical examples of saints Children of God, mighty men who suffered discouragement and how they dealt with it. Let us get into the word. First person we want to tackle is Job. The Bible tells us in Job chapter 1, let's go to the book of Job. Amazing story. Amazing story. Let's go to Job chapter 1. The Bible tells us in Job chapter 1, verse 1, Watch my lips. Job was blameless. Job was upright. One who feared God. He shunned evil. And had a deep relationship with God. The Job faced a crisis. Lost his entire family. Lost his possessions. His life was full of boils. For no reason. Listen to Job. As close as he was to God. The Bible tells us even when his children went and played outside, when they came, he sanctified them with a special ceremony to purify them in case they have erred against God. Job faced a crisis. Listen to what Job said. Job chapter 6. And it will help you to understand the nature of discouragement and how it works. Listen. Job chapter 6. And Job was not someone who didn't know God. Job knew God. He faced a, a monumental problem and did not know what to do. Job chapter 6 verse 4. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me. This is Job. My spirit drinks in their poison. Verse 8. Oh, that I might have my request. That God will grant me the thing that I long for. Oh, that God will please. That it will please God to crush me. Job, do you really mean it? The situation was bad. Job wished death. Verse 9 of Job chapter 6. That it will please God to crush me. That he will lose his hand and cut me off. Then I will still have comfort. Though in anguish, I would exult. Job chapter 6, verse 4. Note it. 
Job chapter 6, 8 and 9. Listen to me carefully, please. To accept failure as final is to be finally a failure. Let me repeat that. This is where Job was going. To accept failure as final is to be finally a failure. This is where Job was going. Job was saying, I want to die. God, kill me. I am tired. The pressure. Be careful what you say when discouragement comes. Job wanted suicide. He was confused. He was fed up. He wanted to leave church. Mind you, everything you say when discouragement comes is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Everything you say can become your nightmare. That is Job. Let's go to another person. Let's tackle a major prophet. Second example. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 7. Amazing. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 7. Wow. What a lesson for us. Listen to Jeremiah. You love Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, mighty prophet of God, holy man of God, fearless before men, pipeline to God's throne. No one could stand his power. Here is Jeremiah. In the place of despair, God allowed him to experience a situation few have known. Jeremiah was unsure what God was doing or what God was up to. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 7. Oh Lord, you induce me and I am persuaded. You are stronger than I and I prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. For when I speak, when I spoke, I cried out. I shouted violence and violence because the word of the Lord was made for me. A reproach and a derision daily. This is Job. Sorry, this is Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 7. Oh Lord, thou have deceived me and I was deceived. Hmm. Serious statement. Thou deceived me and I was deceived. Listen to the word. Jeremiah, the New American Standard Bible says, Oh Lord, thou deceived me and I was deceived. Thou hast overcome me and prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. People mock me. That is the story. So we've seen the case of Job. We've seen the case of Jeremiah. Fight discouragement. Otherwise, it can destabilize you. Let me give you the chain reaction. When discouragement comes, the next thing that comes, confusion. The next thing that comes, loss of vision. It's a chain reaction. And the next thing, withdrawal. You don't believe it? Look at Job. Look at Jeremiah. We are going to look at other folks. We are going to look at Peter. I said when the discouragement hits you, the next thing is confusion. The next thing is loss of vision and purpose. And the next thing is withdrawal. Listen to Jeremiah who turned their prophecies to nations. When discouragement came, listen to him in Jeremiah chapter 20. Let's go to verse 14. Cursed be the day in which I was born. Oh, Jeremiah, don't say that. Jeremiah, the major prophet, you admire him, you love him, you appreciate him. In the time of discouragement, listen to the mighty man of God, cursing the day he was born. Oh, be careful what you say when you are in crisis. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 14. Cast me the day in which I was born. Let the day not be blessed in which my mother bore me. Let the man be cursed who brought news to my father saying, A male child, Jeremiah, has been born, making him glad. And let that man be like the cities. With the Lord overthrew, referring to Sodom, let him hear the cry of the morning and the shouting of noon. Verse 17. Because he did not kill me, 
from the womb. Jeremiah is so discouraged that he felt he should have died when he was born. That my mother might have been in the grave and my womb, and the womb always enlarged with me. Why did I come forth from the womb? To see labor and sorrow that my days should be consumed with shame. Oh, no. No. Jeremiah. Jeremiah was in bad shape. What do you say when you are discouraged? In times like this, maybe you are not going to work. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe your marriage is in shambles. Maybe you are facing some crisis. Are you speaking like Jeremiah? You are cursing the day you were born. You are 40 years and you are not married. 40 years, no child. 10 year graduate, no job. Perpetual tenant until your landlord promoted you as a senior tenant. Living on loan. Crisis in your life. Is it making you speak like the way Jeremiah was speaking? Does this sound like the words? Of a fearless prophet of God. Jeremiah was overwhelmed with trouble and affliction. He wished death. He had died in his mother's womb. Amazing story. It gives us food for thought. So here we are seeing the case of Job. Case 31. The case of Jeremiah. Case 1. The case of Elijah. Oh, so much to think about. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17. My goodness. 1 Kings. You've heard about Job. You've heard about Elijah. You've heard about Jeremiah. Let's go to Elijah, my favorite prophet. 1 Kings 17. I'm speaking on God's answer to discouragement. And it's going to end on a good note. God's answer to discouragement. We go to 1 Kings chapter 17. Huh. When you talk about Elijah, what comes into your mind? I said, when you talk about Elijah, I mean it. What comes into your mind? The man who went to heaven in a chariot, God sent a special flight to pick him. He knew the supernatural works of God. He brought the dead back to life. He prayed and the heavens were shut for three and a half years. At 80 years, Elijah outran Ahab's chariot after the Mount Carmel experience. Then came Jezebel. After Mount Carmel. Suddenly, the once fearless man of God turned techy. You can face something that can rubbish all your past great record if you allow discouragement in your life. If it happened to Elijah, it can happen to you. In First, first Kings chapter 17, Jezebel threw the challenge to Elijah after Mount Carmel. We go to 1 Kings chapter 19 and see an amazing story that should change your life. I'm teaching on God's answer to discouragement. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19, please. Wow. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me, and more so, if I do not make your life like one of the people. And when she saw that, he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. This is Elijah. Ran for his life and went to Beersheba. Listen to it. And left his servant dead. First Kings 19. But he himself went a day's journey to the wilderness and sat under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die. And he said, it is enough. The Lord, take my life. I am not better than my fathers. Wow. How do we address this? 
God's answer to discouragement. Look at a man who knew God's supernatural works. He brought the dead back to life. He prayed and there was no rain for three and a half years. Then Jezebel threw the challenge to him. And the man of God hit the road. He ran for his life. He said, it is enough. First Kings 19. Elijah said, it is enough. Went into the wilderness. When you face discouragement, do you run away from church? It is the same principle I've developed. Look at it. When it happened, it's the same chain of events. Look at the chain reaction. Discouragement is followed by confusion. Confusion is followed by loss of vision. Loss of vision is followed by withdrawal. If you allow discouragement, even what God has told you to do, you would abandon it. You remember the disciples. They overcame discouragement. They followed Peter, denied the Lord, deserted him, and ran for their lives. So discouragement, remember, leads to confusion. Confusion leads to loss of vision, and loss of vision leads to what? Withdrawal. It is a chain of event that you must fight. And let's settle this matter now. Failure comes sometime when you step out of your comfort zone. Let's look at now the causes of discouragement. We have seen the case of Job. We've seen the case of Jeremiah. We have seen the big case of Elijah. Discouragement from the life of Elijah. First Kings chapter 19 verse 3. Discouragement pushed him away from fellowship. He left his assistant. First Kings 19 3. Secondly, discouragement hurts our self-image. First Kings chapter 19 verse 4. Look at what he says. Amazing. And he said, he said, he prayed that I might die. Look at what he says. The prophet, it is enough. Take my life. Did he really mean it? First, discouragement pushes you away from fellowship. First Kings 19, 3. Secondly, discouragement will hurt your self-image. He's talking death. First Kings chapter 19, verse 4. The third thing, discouragement makes us avoid our responsibility. First Kings chapter 19, verse 9. And he went into a cave and spent the night there. And God asked him, what are you doing here? If you are discouraged, you come to the place where even what God has told you, you don't want to do it anymore. Are there not people staying home right now? What God has told them to do, they are not doing it. You are afraid. You are scared. You are thinking about dying. You think something is going to kill you. I'm here to tell you, you will live and not die. In the name of Jesus. One year from today, you will still be around by the power of God. Get out of your bunker. Get out of your hole. You have a life to live. God told Elijah, get out of here. Your life has not come to an end. You've seen Job. You've seen Jeremiah. And the big one, Elijah. Discouragement pushes you away from fellowship. First Kings 19.3. Discouragement helps your self-image. You begin to speak anyhow. First Kings 19.4. Discouragement makes you avoid your responsibility. First Kings 19.9. And finally, discouragement leads to a blame game. First Kings 19.10. And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord of hosts. Your prophets and with the sword. I, uh, I alone am left. Discouragement leads to a blame game. You look for somebody to blame. Are there not millions living at home right now? They are looking for somebody to blame. You are not the only one in it. Look at the story. So here, but never forget, discouragement leads to confusion. Confusion leads to loss of vision. And loss of vision leads to withdrawal. Finally, we come to the main thing. Causes of discouragement. Number one, 
unmet expectations. When our expectations are not met, when life doesn't meet our expectation, when others don't meet our expectation, when God doesn't meet our expectation, we get discouraged. You don't have to be. God is a God of a second chance. Can I hear amen? There will be a comeback. Your comeback will be greater than your setback. What did I say? Discouragement comes when our expectations are not met. We don't meet our own expectations. When life doesn't meet our expectations, when others don't meet our expectations, and when God doesn't meet our expectations. Look at this. Signs of a discouraged person. Number one, we compromise. Peter cut off Malchus' ear. He was desperate. Take things into your own hands. A discouraged person takes things into his own hands. John chapter 18. Next, signs of a discouraged person. I want you to look at your life. We quit. Despair, frustration. Luke chapter 22, verse 62. Peter went out and wept bitterly. We quit. When you are discouraged, if you are not careful, despair, frustration, you quit. I'm not doing it again. In the midst of COVID-19, how many people are giving up? How many people are quitting? And some also finally withdraw. John chapter 20, verse 19. Door shut. Death of despair. You don't want to be involved. Disciples behind closed doors. Unable to finish the task Jesus gave them. We drew completely. They were no more productive. Into their shells with self-pity. Can I ask you something? What are some of the signs of discouragement in single people and young people? The biggest source of discouragement among singles is the desire for happy, satisfying relationships with someone. But if it doesn't happen, what do you do? Can I ask you? If it does not happen, what do you do? What do you do when it doesn't happen? I want to give you now keys for the cure for discouragement. Number one, consider the empty tomb. When Peter saw the empty tomb, his mind was changed. Whenever we take steps outside our past limitations and conquer our fears, and I conclude with this, to overcome your discouragement, expect the unexpected. Peter and Cole went a fishing after the death of Jesus. No catch. A stranger told them, cast the net on the other side. Suddenly, they had a bumper harvest. In the midst of all their discouragement, they had the unexpected. So I tell you today, in the midst of your discouragement, expect the unexpected. Can I hear amen? Expect the unexpected. You may be on your way to leave flowers at the tomb of Jesus. Expect the unexpected. You may be in Herod's prison like Peter, expecting to die like James. Expect the unexpected. An angel will visit you in the midst of your discouragement. Ah, you may be like the man who lay at the beautiful gate at, at the pool of Bathsheba, Bathsheba, 38 years, hopeless case. In John chapter 5, expect the unexpected. Let your discouragement go away. Oh yeah, I have a few more for you. You may be like the disabled man who sat in front of the beautiful gate day and night. Even Jesus did not take care of him in Acts chapter 3. Expect the unexpected. You may be like Martha and Mary who thought God had waited too long, four days. Jesus did not appear in John chapter 11. Expect the unexpected in your discouragement. Oh goodness, you may think it's all over. They all reach out to the pit and God came through for them. I declare in the midst of your discouragement, in the midst of the crisis, is it Jeremiah? Is it Job? Is it Peter? All of them had a happy end. They all reached to a point 
of being discouraged by the unexpected came. They encountered the power of the living God. Look at blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10. Shut out, blind. Jesus on his last journey from Jericho to Jerusalem. He met blind Bartimaeus. He had the unexpected. And I conclude with this in Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 is one of the greatest chapters. You see the case of demons, disease, and death. There's no chapter like that where the three things men fear are all encapsulated in that chapter. What do you say to that? The woman with the issue of blood, physical issue, financial issue, family issue, an outcast, 12 years, bleeding, expect the unexpected. David said in Psalm 27 verse 13, I would have fainted unless I believe to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. You have heard the word of God. God's answer to discouragement. God came through for Jeremiah. God came through for Job. God came through for Peter. God came through for Bartimaeus. God came through for the man by the pool of Bethsaida. God came through for the woman with the bleeding crisis of 12 years. I declare today as you've heard my voice, God will come through for you. Expect the unexpected. I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Child of God, you will not die. When it's all over, you will have a testimony. God bless you. Amen.